Today, I'd like to uh, introduce about uh, a general issue of the normal time memory storage, especially at uh, data centers with uh, emerging applications like machine learning. So my name is Ken Takeuchi from Chiyo University. So let's start from the uh, discrete device. So first, I'd like to introduce the overview of the normal time discrete memories. So as you can see, there is a, a trade-off between uh, latency and the capacity in case of the non-vital memories. So actually there is no, unfortunately, no perfect non-vital memory. So there is no universal memory. So inherently, that will cause to have a hierarchical uh, structure of various kinds of memories. So recently there are many uh, research results about the uh, STTM RAMs, RE RAMs, and uh, P RAMs. And they are operating with a different principle of the uh, set and reset. But uh, from the circuit point of view, so let's discuss these memories. So in case of P RAM, it's matured in production. So we have a gigabit level products. So still they have need a, a lot of current to set or reset because of the, uh, they need a dual heating to transit from the crystal to the amorphous. So next, the MRAM is good in terms of the reliability of the uh, unlimited endurance, but still the cell size is rather than DRAMs. And the next one, RRAM. So in terms of the capacity, it's most promising, I think. But there is a huge variability, and also there is a, a limited endurance. So if we think about the current endurance, reliability, and the cell size and density, there is always a trade-off among them. So naturally, we should have a hierarchical structure of various kinds of memories, and we will split the emerging storage class memory into two parts. The first one is memory type SGM, and the second type is a storage type SGM. So in case of the MSGM, maybe the most promising candidate is HTTM. So they are very fast, especially the latency is short, and the endurance is large, but the capacity is small because of the big cell size. So in case of S type SGM, it has a large capacity at low cost, but endurance is still limited. So we will need to have this kind of the tri-hybrid structure. This is a non volatile cache, MSGM, and SSGM, and as a primary uh, storage, non flash so if we split into three kinds of memories, we need appropriately allocate data. So the super hot data is the most frequently uh, written or read data. And uh, hot data should be stored here. And cold data, cold data is not read or written, not so frequently. So it's, it should be stored in NAND flash. Therefore, this kind of the uh, appropriate data management or location is critical. But if we have such kind of the intelligent software, uh, we could have the storage system performance or energy by 10x. But we have to be careful because these kinds of the uh, allocation strongly depends on the workers or applications. So how to do that? So in the future, uh, disaggregated data centers, the most resources like CPUs, memories, storage class memories, and flash and controllers are pulled like this. And most resources are virtualized and shared by uh, many users. So we call this multi-tenant environment. If these resources are put at data centers. The question is, who manage these resources? So as I told earlier, the uh, capacity of, for example, SGMs 
and land flash strongly depend on the applications. But who will control? So in a manual system, the system engineer have to control and manage these kinds of resources. But as you can imagine very easily, there are so many tenants at data centers. It, the operation cost is too high. So some kind of the automatic memory capacity control by using, for example, in this case, example, they are using the ghost error list. Such kind of the automatic memory capacity control is essential at data centers in the future. So next, we will move to the AIs, including the machine learning. Before going to the AIs, we have to talk, think about the trade-off of non-volatile memories. So this trade-off is very simple and very critical. If the memory cell is easy to write, this means that it's easy to crush data, keeping data, that is a reliability, and the uh, operation speed, right, such as write speed or uh, read speed, has a relationship of the trade-off. As you can see in this figure, the read latency, write latency, power, and cost has a, a trade-off, but the key knob is the reliability or precision. In this talk, I would like to emphasize that if we can relax the requirements of reliability or precision of memory cells, we can gain the performance or power or cost advantages. And in case of the machine learning like deep neural networks, errors are naturally acceptable. That means that we can gain the uh, performance or power or cost advantage. So let's discuss in detail in the following examples. So this is the policy. So we we call this kind of uh, memories uh, approximate number of memories by using the uh, terms of general approximate computing. So we will tolerate errors and reduce accuracies at chip level and gain the performance or power advantage. But we need to secure the accuracy at the application level, such as the inference of deep neural network. This means that this kind of concept strongly depends on the applications. So it's naturally a domain-specific computing. So there are two steps. So first, we have to evaluate the uh, value of data. So we have to recognize important data and unimportant data and make actions such as uh, storing the important data in uh, important, reliable, fast memories. So already there are some uh, approximate memories in uh, volatile memories. In case of SRAM, if there is a uh, uh, variability of the threshold voltage of these transistors, we cannot decrease the uh, PDD, the power supply voltage. But in case of the uh, deep neural network, we can tolerate errors, and this means that we can decrease the uh, PDD and gain the performance, the power reduction. So in case of DRAMs, we are considering the uh, power increase of the refresh. In some cells, there is a uh, leakage, and we have to set a very short retention uh, refresh time. So we have to refresh these memory cells very frequently. But in case of the deep neural network, we can have some, we can accept some kind of the errors. So we can set our short uh, refresh time and we can reduce the power consumption related with the refresh. So next, let's go on to the uh, non volatile memories. This is the primary part of this uh, presentation. So let's think about the face recognition in a security system. In a storage, there is a huge amount of databases of the uh, images. And we can detect some uh, important person or a dangerous person by referring to the data in SSDs. So in this case, for example, in this example, this is a floating point format. The sign or exponent or higher value is important 
because if they are uh, become different, the uh, image itself will change significantly. But these kinds of, of the data is not so important. So what we will do is that uh, we propose the value area data mapping. This is a conventional flash memory. So in general, so this is a TLC. TLC means a three bit parcel flash memory. There are three bits, upper, middle, and lower. And in the digital use of flash memories, they should have the same reliability. So here, here, and here, 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 and here, and here, the if data uh, change, the uh, error occurs. In the upper page, there are two locations to change data, and the middle page has three locations, and the lower page has two. So they will have the similar reliability. But in the proposed VADM for deep neural network, we intentionally change the code. So like upper page, there are one, two, three, four. So we have four locations to check cause errors. So it's uh, less reliable. And in the lower page, there is only one location to flip data. So this is very reliable. So what we did is that to, to store the important data, like sign and exponent in the lower page, and allocating the unimportant data in the unreliable upper page. As a result, the acceptable bit error rate increased 27 times, like here. And even if we have more than 1% of bit errors, we can uh, accurately identify the faces. So this is another example to enhance the performance of the uh, NAND flash. So as you know, in a NAND flash, there is an error. So and we have two correct errors. Like, for example, in this ECC, that they are gradually decreasing errors by repeating the decoding of LTPC. So for example, if we, complete, we have to completely eliminate errors, we have to uh, repeat the decoding like 20 times. So, but it takes a lot of time. But if the errors are acceptable for here, so we just stop the decoding at the five decoding circles. And although we, the error remains, it's okay because the deep neural network is error, error tolerant. And as a result, we can have the performance gain of 28%. So this is a final example. So this is a brand new result. Uh, we will present at the Bracer's Symposium. This is a uh, approximate RLAM design. So as in the previous slides, I talked about the workload uh, dependence of the storage uh, allocation. But what we observed right here is that the workload itself is totally ununiform and asymmetric. Like here, so this is the total data, and this is the right access and the need access. And this is extremely hot data, because this means that most of the read or write concentrate on particular addresses. If we think about in terms of the uh, memory devices, these hot data causes the high endurance and causes a lot of errors. So just this kind of the system performer characteristics or workload characteristics causes uh, like more than 400 bit error rate difference. So this is a big problem for us. So we introduced the approximate design. Approximate design means that in case of the usual digital circuit design, error should not be allowed. So we have to design ECC considering the worst case cells. And we have to think about the slowest cell and the smallest uh, lead current cells. But we can tolerate 1% to 10% of errors and we just consider the typical cells. By using this kind of uh, design change, we could boost the performance by 7x and save, uh, save the energy by 90%. So in summary, so I have introduced the uh, status of non-vital memory storage. 
So as I told earlier, the memory is not ideal. So we have to have a hybrid structure of various kinds of memories. And naturally, we have to have an automatic capacity control because the operation cost by human is too expensive. But in case of the, this is a little bit tough issue for data center operators. But in case of the emerging application of AIs, we can introduce appropriate computing. So we could resolve the non-data memory trade-off by tolerating the errors. And we can get the uh, performance, power, and cost gains. Thank you very much for hearing.